Welcome to the Peace Security Channel everybody. Today we'll be continuing the Zone Alarm Review. This is part 2 where we'll be doing the detection and removal and then the zero day component test. So as we saw in the last test, uh, it did pretty average but uh, due to the high resource usage and user unfriendliness and bugginess of the program, I actually rated it below average. You can watch that video. It's part 1 of this review. I highly recommend you watch that before you watch this. So let's first do an update just to make sure that they have got the latest signatures installed and then we will do a scan of this folder of malware. I've turned off the real-time protection so that we can do that. That's the end of the update, so we'll just hit the close button, and now I will do a right-click scan with default settings. And let's see how many of these, okay, let me just show you that there are 468 items in here. So we'll find out how many it catches, and we'll remove them, and then we'll find out the detection rate. Scans complete fairly quickly as well, just three minutes. And all the files have been removed automatically, so that was a fairly fast uh, scan and removal process. I'm quite happy with that. So we'll close that and see what we've got left over. So we've got 93 items here. And we had 468 to begin with, so that gives us... eighty um, percent it's eighty point one so well it's not the best of detection rates uh, but let's see what it can do to these files when we enable everything you can see everything's enabled they've got application control they've got a firewall got some kind of uh, intrusion prevention with this firewall as well I guess So, let's see how it reacts to these files. Okay, this one's caught. And removed, that's nice. Okay, that one deleted itself. So we'll try about 10 to 15 files and then uh, we'll move on. So we've got plenty of process going here. No response from any zero day component so far, just the one that was caught by the signatures. But we do have some files in here running. A lot of these are slightly different variants of the same kind of malware, so... Okay, so that one didn't work because this is a virtual machine. So 
So we've certainly got some things running around. Now how devastating they are, that we'll find out shortly. So far no responses from Zone Alarm. Application control, whether or not it's working, I have no idea. If it is, it should be restricting these files from doing any damage to the system. It'll be interesting to take a look at that. I'll do so in a little while. There's one more that just deleted itself. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of it. I'm not going to run anymore. So let's see what application control says. It says 11 program secured. Now we've got all these files in the list here and Smart Defense was set to auto for all of these. It doesn't say what's their trust level or uh, whether they were a trusted outbound connection or not. It doesn't give me anything so it's not a very helpful thing this because pretty much everything's unknown. Anyway, we'll see how it did. So I will let these files run around, then I'll reboot the computer, run CCleaner, try to delete this folder, and uh, do a scan with Malwarebytes and Hitman Pro and show you guys the results, just like I do every time. All the scans are complete, but before we take a look at the results, uh, Zone Alarm still says we're secure, of course. So before we take a look at the results, I just wanted to show you guys some symptoms of malware infection that you can see yourself so that uh, it helps you, you know, when you've got no scanners or anything to identify malware in an infected computer. So as you can see, I've just opened up Task Manager and you can see three Internet Explorer process running, iExplorer.exe, that's Internet Explorer but I haven't even got one open so all of them are invisibly running so this is suspicious activity and nine times out of ten this is because of uh, malware infection and then we've got three of them and uh, then let's take a look here we've got an SVC host.exe 32-bit process and it's taking up 50 percent of the CPU and look at the description well yard now that's interesting. Again, this is pretty much 100% a malware infection. You can see, you can tell just by looking at it because it's chewing at the CPU, as you can see, 50% at this time. And if you look at all the other host processes, which are the original SVC hosts, um, they rarely take up this much CPU. But look at this, consistently above 45. And uh, this is another malware process. So. You can identify processes like this just through experience without even having to scan or do anything. So now let's take a look at the results which of course aren't very pleasing. We've got a Trojan file. There you go. Surely enough. svchost.exe. Then we've got a registry key, another memory process here. A file the shell.exe, I'm quite sure we saw that too. Let me just show you here. There you go, shell.exe, 32-bit process and description says system. Interesting. And we've got plenty of such stuff here. Then more memory process uh, here, minor.dll, memory modules, uh, these are all PUPs of course but we've got three Trojans there and three more Trojan injectors uh, once in program data we've got some registry key changes we've got a zero access rootkit oh god you certainly do not want this on your system and we've got more PUP hijack registry key hijack security hijack uh, it's a nightmare so let's take a look at what Hitman Pro says. Again, surely enough, SVC host, it says this is a kind of ransomware. Again, miner.dll, malware. These are those Bitcoin miner apps. They're all malware. And uh, this one is a Trojan. Let's 
take a look at the details and uh, then we've got more malware of that Bitcoin miner thing and uh, this is the rootkit so it's made a total mess of the system and then we've got these three these are uh, zero access of course but these are in the recycle bin so no real infections then we've got this one which is another piece of Trojan according to Hitman Pro so well it says backdoor type behavior and it's cut by the signatures of Icarus so final verdict on zone alarm I'm sorry but I have to say this was very disappointing now it's one of those security suites that has a lot of unrealized potential and it looked promising at the start but it's really not making much ground and as for now whether or not you should use this on your own computer whether this should be your primary security suite well for me it's a no-brainer there's certainly better alternatives and uh, given the fact that it uses a ton of RAM and does not have enough security to compensate for the resource usage there is no reason for me to recommend this where's that process now okay let me look here this easier way to find it just look at the memory look at the process that's using the most of it and there you go bingo that zone alarm process so it's still using 200 megabytes of RAM but even that wasn't enough to stop so much malware from getting into the system so it's not good enough needs tons of improvements uh, did not interact very well with the user zero day protection seemed pretty much non-existent although it had an application control and you know whatever they like to call it uh, names aren't any good unless they really do something and in this case they didn't do anything and they let uh, a rootkit get through that's pathetic so certainly looking forward to better security features in this suite so it's been a bit of a dis disappointment for me because uh, as I said, it looked promising at the start. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, more malware, more fun. Have a nice day, and uh, talk to you guys later.